Dan, we haven't talked to you in a really long time about the arena. It wasn't even approved the last time we spoke with you. You know, from then till now, how far along are we? You know, how are things coming along from Icon's point of view? Well, uh, the nice part is we're in the ground. We're, we've been under construction now for uh, about three months, pretty much exactly three months on the, on the 3rd of June. So far, so good. It's, uh, it's, it's going well. Excavation is done. We're pouring, uh, you know, concrete columns out there right now. And the, and the next thing that people will see happening uh, will be the formwork will start to get put in place that supports the event level. And so I, I'm not sure if people, uh, how, how much information they know about the new building, but the new building will have parking uh, underneath the event level, which is a, a little bit unique in, in this type of arena. And so what you're seeing out there right now is the, uh, it's, it's the parking garage getting built. And the next thing will be the formwork that supports the event level where the ice, where the ice is going to be located. Uh, we've seen the renders, we've seen kind of the process, you know, it's kind of changed and been tweaked here and there. Yeah. Uh, how unique of a building is this actually going to be? Because there's going to be two ice surfaces yeah. and there will be the, the winter garden aspect as well. In terms of, you know, you working on a number of arenas right. and especially recently, how unique is this building in shape? Because they always talk about this iconic look and all that, but, yeah. you know, in your point of view, from your eyes, uh, what's it going to be like? Oh, it's... it's going to be second to none uh, from the standpoint of being just a game changer for for NHL arenas. I mean, it, this one has it all. It does have the you know uh, community rank attached to it. It's got uh, a, a seamless connection to the light rail, which comes into the Winter Garden. The Winter Garden is going to provide people with, a, with an area for them to gather before the game uh, or, or before a concert for that matter. And uh, I think that's so important in, in, a, in a climate like Edmonton where you've got, um, you know, harsh cold winters you don't want to be standing outside uh, waiting to get in a building and oftentimes you know when concerts roll through town they'll make you they'll make you wait before they open the gate up and so the winter garden is is going to be extremely unique because uh, it's going to allow people an area to gather uh, it's going to be a, a great place to meet up before an event and it also uh, it does double duty of, uh, of getting people across 104th Avenue, which is a, it's a busy inter, a, a busy road. And uh, having that ability to bring people up and over uh, through the Winter Garden is, is just, I think, fabulous. When you look at the amenities of this of this new facility that's being built here, uh, you talked about, we heard, you know, setting the bar, iconic again, that, that term. Yeah. Um, but what, are, yeah, well, <laughs> if it's iconic, it's iconic, right? <laughs> but, you know, what are some of the things that will benefit the fans, um, you know, you go to Rexall Place, yeah. the main concourse is tight, but that's indicative of what was built in the 70s. Right. Uh, but you go, the higher you go up, the tighter it gets. The less room there is going to be. Where is this building going to be unique in, in those aspects, maybe? Well, I think in terms of uh, square footage of concourse space, um, I, I my guess is that it's going to have the most per person. Um, what we did here is we, we're top-loading both bowls. So um, if some of you have been to... Uh, XL Energy Center in St. Paul, Minnesota, or more recently, Console Energy Center for the pe for the Penguins. Both of those buildings are built where people come in at the main concourse and walk down to their seats. And similarly, at the upper concourse, they come in at the upper concourse and walk down to their seats. When you design a building from that standpoint, um, the upper concourse ultimately determines the entire footprint of of, of the building because the wider you make that upper concourse it trickles all the way down to the foundations um, what we did here is we maximized uh, the upper concourse for for the available site made it as big as possible and and during the whole budgeting phase trying to get this to budget um, you know fortunately we did not cut the width of that upper concourse when you cut the width of the upper concourse in this type of design it it trickles down through four or five levels so you can save significant square footage but you're designing a building that's going to be there for 40 or 50 years and and uh having that extra square footage up on that upper concourse is just going to make a world of difference how would you compare this building uh, i know it's still you know early in construction yeah. as opposed to some of the ones you've worked on recently you talk about pittsburgh and you talk about new jersey as well well um you know every time you open one of these buildings it's uh, it's it's just you know obviously it, Having personally been involved in Pittsburgh, I'm so proud of that building. It's a it's a, a wonderful experience for the fans. It gets rave reviews as a hockey building, um, and so obviously I don't want to take anything away from that building. Um, with this particular building in Edmonton, it's 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 
has a lot of different seating products that we uh, we didn't have in Pittsburgh. There's there's a, a variety of different food offerings and concession offerings in this building uh, and premium products that just um, you know Pittsburgh didn't have. And one thing that I can point to is that in in Pittsburgh, um, at one end of the building, we built in uh, about 250 loge boxes. Now, loge boxes are are premium products for uh, smaller companies or or individuals that don't want to or or simply can't afford a, a suite with 24 seats in it. And the other thing about a suite is you've got to find a way to fill that suite on a game by game basis, which isn't always easy, um, especially midweek. And so. The loge box concept allows you to buy a, a row of four or six seats um, in front of a drink rail, full access to premium product. Um, you've got a, a, you know, the, the drink rail itself allows you to, you know, have as much food and beverage as you'd like out there. Um, and it's just such a great product. It went over so well in Pittsburgh. Uh, I think they sold 250 of them like right away. They wish they would have put more in. And I think that lesson that we learned there uh, applies to this building because now you've got a whole level. Uh, of loge seats in this building, which uh, you don't see in any other NHL buildings. So it's like a sports bar where as opposed to watching a TV, you're actually watching the game kind of thing. Absolutely. Yeah, it's going to be phenomenal. Okay, I have to ask you about the, uh, maybe this is an optical illusion. People watch the live cam, they say, that. how are you going to fit a big rink right. on a piece of land uh, of that you know size? Yeah. But sure enough, obviously, you can confirm this, uh, the rink will definitely fit on that, <laughs> fit. that piece of line. Yeah, if you're watching the, if you're watching the live camera, it's, uh, you know, the exterior foundations of the building are going in. They, uh, you know, they work. It does fit on that site. Um, and actually, it, it, is, it, it is a big footprint. Um, what you see on the webcam is you also see on the east end um, where the loading dock is and the community rink is, there's, there's a, another parking garage area that's dedicated to the private development. So that in itself technically would not need to be uh, part of this this site and so it's it's actually bigger than what we would need to build a building in terms of its uh, east to west east to west width uh, and finally just timelines what are we looking at uh, now that construction's underway uh, yeah um, maybe steel and then going forward to there to hit that 2016 opening date yeah the, the next milestone that we really need to hit is uh, to be able to start erecting the steel in, in late fall early winter um, steel erection will last about 12 months. It's it's an entirely from the from the main level up, the event level up. It's a it's a steel structure building, um, and so we need to have that event level ready, uh, the loading dock ready, so that we can start driving the big cranes in and, and erecting that steel. If we can if we can get the steel erected within that year, uh, it allows us to start putting the skin on the building and get the building closed in by the uh, fall of 2015, spring of 2016. We're closed in for next winter, not not this coming winter, but the following winter. Um, hopefully, knock on wood, we'll we'll, uh, we'll be able to open in the, in the fall of 2016. But so far, so good.